What's going on, everybody? I am Bird Dog John. Thanks for joining us today. Um, and we are going to kick things off here. It is 1 a.m. in Melbourne right now, and that is exactly where I am. Without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Robbie to the show. What's going on, man? All right, let's see. Hey, what's going on, Judson? Hey, hey, thanks for having me. Before I do much more, um, uh, we are joined with Bird Dog Ian, who is at the uh, Capture Summit over in Atlanta. So how's it going, man? Hot land. Hot and sweaty. That's the most important question that our team can ask. Why are you needing this camera? Now, I haven't tested this thing since it got here. This is something that um, I'm really excited that NDI did. That's cool. Obviously, there are lots of flavors here, but we have this is the 4250 line. And our little friend here. Say hello to my little friend. It's brewing in the back of my throat. Based on the recommendation of Senseless, uh, we're going to give a Java Monster a try. Oh, uh, yeah, Pocky, dude. We got a little Pocky, and yes. I have been putting this off for an age. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Uh, there is a Snacks on Stream mystery box brought to you by my Snacks on Stream manager, Break. What's going on, Bugsy? There you go. What's going on? <laughs> Bali, good to see you, man. Uh, what's going on, NetHab? Hey, what's going on, Judson? And hey, Kevin, good to see you, man. What's going on, Jeremy? How are you? Thanks for jumping on. Oh, it's all good. Well, it is that time of the week that we will be hanging out together. I'm really excited to uh, bring you on the show and... Welcome to another fun little hour of discussion of everything bird dog. Uh, today is a very special day because I have a guest on the show and we're going to just talk about a bunch of things. And so without further ado, let me bring on my friend, Mr. Tom Sinclair. How are you, Tom? Hey, John. Good morning. How good morning. are you? I am doing well. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate that. Are you kidding? Gee whiz. Most people won't have me on their show for fear of what it'll do to their ratings. <laughs> See, you just don't care. That's why we have to host our own shows by ourselves, because then at least we can do what we want and say what we want and not get in too much trouble. But That's right. Awesome. Well, how have things been? Now, you just got back from a camping trip, you said? Yes. Did a little camping over in Florida. Yep. Okay. So fine. now for those of you who are new to the agenda here, Tom, you are down in... I am in Alabama. Alabama. The, Where right about the Alabama? Gulf of Mexico. Oh, really? Uh, where we have some beautiful beaches that nobody knows anything about, but we went, we would zipped over to Florida yeah. just to enjoy the beaches over there. Just well, that's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I used to go down um, for a few years. We would go down to Panama City Beach, which is right there on the Gulf, sure. and hang out there for a, a weekend at a big uh, youth conference that we used to be a part of. And so that All was right. always a, a fun little memory. Uh, we great. were about 50 miles from Panama City. Oh, nice. Um, I keep telling my wife, I'm like, we should go and like take the kids down to Panama City Beach. And she's like, you know, there are other beaches in this <laughs> like country, right? Like, it's not the only place in the world that we could go. <laughs> but anyway, we enjoyed it. Good stuff. Good stuff. So camping. Now, when you say camping, so the people on this show know that when I talk about camping, I'm like trekking through the the middle of the woods in northern ontario what do you mean by camping yeah no we're not doing that uh camping for us is involves uh, an air-conditioned travel trailer nice so yeah that that's all good there's a very various types actually bird dog brayton who is one of the guys that does he is the guy that does the repairs in this office he um works at a campground that is kind of as a, a part-time thing that he does he's a manager over there because uh, he's worked up the ranks pretty well. And then I stole him and, and now he's full time with me. But he is at a campground that also has like, you know, places to take trailers and that sort of thing. So we're not we're not too far removed from that. It's quite a trailer camping around here is actually there's quite a big community and culture in Michigan. The folks that do that on a regular basis. Matter of fact, the place that he works, um, he they they'll like rent out their spaces for the summer. And so guys will come up from Florida and do a whole summer in Michigan and then they'll go back down to Florida when you know it starts getting a little chilly which yeah. is right about now it's 57 yeah. 55 degrees outside 
Well, that's that weather sounds really great to me. Oh it's yeah, been in the nineties down here, so yeah. Oh wow, yeah, it's it's a little breezy. I put the kids in the car. It was fifty seven degrees this morning, and now it's fifty four. I think something like that. So it's it today. It's been strange because yesterday was ninety or eighty degrees, and now the weather has officially shifted. Today's the first day of fall, and so. It is 100% uh, full on fall here in Michigan now. The leaves are all going to change. And there you uh, go. Yeah, it's the, <clears throat> I won't say the snowball is rolling, but that's <laughs> more, tr more true than I care to, I care to mention. Uh, I've got some folks on here. Oh, I, uh, so for those of you who don't know, Tom is also known as Eastern Shore Broadcasting. If you go over to his YouTube page, uh, you can find that there. He does a show. Actually, I'll let you. Your show, when is it? And uh, and give a time zone so guys know, but run a plug for uh, for your show. Well, actually, you know, it's kind of funny because uh, you are you are live streaming this show on my YouTube channel concurrent with with yours. So, yep. you know, well done. Well done. Yeah, yeah we want to want to be sure that we could get out to to the platform, especially people who know you and, and don't know the inner workings of Bird Dog. We'd like to like to open them up to options as well and and vice versa i mean the again, inner workings of bird dog oh yeah, that, i like it oh this is gonna that's be good what we cover here at the show and like you said if uh like you said yesterday on your show which i was uh hanging out in the background um and if we get bored then uh we do all sorts of other things as you saw in the bumper video um they make me eat spicy food sometimes or they uh they give me strange like strange candy from other countries just to see how i'll react so uh, Brayton, same guy uh, that I was just talking about. He is my unofficial official um, snacks on stream manager, and ah. he always finds something odd. And then um, Balu, who is another guy that works in my office, he uh, he supplies us with. He goes to the store and finds things to try. And so there are things out on the counter for next week's shows of, of spicy things that I'm going to attempt to eat again so <laughs> so like you said if we get bored we fill the time somehow uh but yeah that's uh that is what we're doing but anyways i'd love to now you and i did an interview which is kind of the first crossover that this channel and your channel have had at nab that's true and so we Back did a little April. one hour one hour chat together that was before you did you know i came down with covid like the next day yeah yeah that was uh that was not good, man. Um, and I spent a few extra days in Vegas that I didn't plan on spending at a very shady hotel. <laughs> this is so, so weird, but it was, uh, yeah, very shady. Thankfully, um, unbelievably, it was all covered by the government. So they paid for all my meals and the room because I was volunteering to isolate for five days. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I went over there. Uh, it was like two days after you and I had hung out. Uh -huh. And I got real nervous because I was like, oh, man, I've I've been interviewing people and sure. hanging You've out with affected it, thousands of people. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it turns out the people that got sick with COVID um, that I know of interacted with me on my last day on the floor, which was Tuesday. Uh -huh. And so uh, you were with us on su Sunday or Monday. I can't remember which one, but none of those folks. And nobody that I interviewed, apart from the bird dog guy, Alessandro, uh, nobody that I interviewed came down with COVID. So, I'll be. yeah, I would knock on wood. Something, uh, something was a little divine intervention there going on. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so the last time we hung out, uh, the last time we did something like this would have been in April. And that was the first real crossover between this channel and yours. And, uh, yeah, and then we've been kind of creeping on each other's channels ever since. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always creeping. You know, if, if I find myself with nothing to do on a Tuesday or Thursday, I'll say, you know, what's John up to? Yeah, what are they up cow? to? Or if I have a question, I'm I'm like, let's see if I can embarrass him with my question. That's so, that is actually a great goal. I told you on that uh, podcast. And by the way, if you guys don't have any idea what we're talking about, go over to the Bird Dog YouTube page, the one with the green symbol, and and just look up uh nab podcast interviews and you'll see an interview between tom and i um and do that after the show but anyways <laughs> we um i i told you at that show that i stole your format of how i talk about devices on my channel that i don't do a lot of like prep work i actually try and unbox it on the channel which and, and like experience it with the crowd because 
it gives a very unfiltered but a real honest opinion then about like you know how did this work or not work or or anything yep. like that so i try not to do a whole lot of and Authentic. it's actually yeah it's it's happened uh it's worked well for me even when it went south sure but uh but it seems to to be the right reception at least so i totally stole that from you and i, I i'll give you credit every day because <laughs> it was it's your tactic uh but yeah it's good stuff well the idea is john you know that if if people are going to trust you yeah. they know number one if i see somebody that's perfect all the time i don't i, I don't trust because i know something's been edited out because sooner or later they've screwed up yep um you know sooner or later they've done something that have made that made them look like an idiot and they didn't want to have that as part of their broadcast. Right. We've dedicated an entire channel to being idiots. <laughs> you know, the, the, our YouTube channel is called streaming idiots Yeah. because sooner or later when you're live streaming, you do something that you say, Oh man. So we had a party at NAB with the streaming idiots community. And when they introduced you, it was something like, like head of the idiots or something like that. Yeah. And I, Chief I was idiot. thinking yeah. about that today and I was like, how do I say that with that? Like to me, it, it sounds extremely insulting. You'd be like, <laughs> and, now, and now Tom Sinclair, who's graciously decided to join us. He's, he's King idiot of the streaming idiots over on his channel. Like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to work that in where it's not, doesn't sound insulting, but Tom said it first, his channel is called streaming idiots. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's part of the format. So tell us a little bit about how that kind of came about, because uh, yeah. I, I think it's super interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It came to me in the shower one day. You know, okay. I said, you know, everybody that's doing live streaming sooner or later forgets to hit the record button, starts to stream without their mic on, you know, has trouble making connections. They do something silly and stupid and they feel like an idiot. Well, let's get all the idiots together in one place <laughs> so that we can share our experiences and learn from each other. And a community was formed. Uh, it's really funny that, that we were doing the streaming idiot show and, and a couple of folks that were regular, regular viewers on the show said, Hey, well, uh, let's start a, a Facebook group for the streaming idiot show. Maybe we'll get 50 people to join. Wouldn't that be fun? And then we can talk about stuff in between the, the, the Wednesday shows. And they right. started this Facebook group hoping to get 50. I checked the other day. It had over 5,000 people in it uh, that are just, you know, they're just idiots. They're, they're trying to figure out this stuff as best they can. Yep. Um, and what better place to do it than in the middle of a group of people that have done the same thing. Yeah. And, and, and that's the appeal. That's we, have, the appeal. we we have found that uh, I have found that at least working in support where <laughs> a lot of people that come to us are just trying to figure it out for the first time, you know? Sure. Um, they, they see a product like VMix or they see a product like a bird dog camera or something like that. Yeah. And they want to integrate that into their system or into their live stream or church service or whatever. And they're, but they're not broadcast people. Like those are not the people right. that are opening the tickets. The people that are in broadcast, have have probably seen it all. They know, you know, they know what they're kind of getting into. And okay, it's a camera. It does this. It does this. These are and they've already fixed it themselves. Yeah, exactly. They've yeah. and you know they've got years of experience, but there is a real uh, desire for a place, which is I think you know what what you're doing well and what I'm trying to put together, where it's just like just come and just come and talk to us about what's going on or. Yeah. Just come and read like for for the bird dog channel, and this is something I've talked about a bunch on on this show, is come and come and find out who we are. Like we're real people, and we're we're not sitting in a call center somewhere, you know, answering phone calls and reading from a generic script. Yeah, we're not right. we're not doing that sort of stuff. Like we're we're genuinely here, boots on the ground, trying to do it ourselves. Like I run a show twice a week with all bird dog equipment. Um, you know, and obviously then things that we don't make, I have to use StreamYard and a few other things, but we're trying to do um, this stuff and, and produce professional. Now, we can talk about that. <laughs> you you brought it up on the show the other day, so I thought on yesterday's show. Um, and so I was like, ooh, we, we could talk about that because, every, again, people on this show know that I'm I'm not a huge vMix user. I have used it and it I definitely think it has its place. Um, 
but I've also tried to use OBS, which was fine. I gave up on it on the day that Dan Mile was on the show with me in this studio. He was visiting, and I had him on here, and it just was struggle busting it along. And I don't know if I, if it was doing that the whole time, and I just was looking past that, or if it was acting up at that point. But it could not handle two camera two camera shots, and I had them kind of crisscross. We're both sitting at this table, just wouldn't do it. So I graduated to Wirecast and ran that for a while but that's a different workflow than yes. the scenes and the you know like the way that you map it out in obs which yes. is um it's kind of a cross between how vmix runs it as you know as i've kind of experienced wirecast kind of does its own thing and again it has its place um it's just i don't think it's as versatile as the vmix flavor because vmix hits such a broad audience um, now, one of the things that I, the reason why I went to StreamYard, and I'll validate it, and then you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, the The reason why I went to it was I was following the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial that was going on. And he, I was following it on YouTube, but I was following it on a YouTube page of a, of a lawyer who was giving real-time lawyer advice about the case while it was happening and talking about okay this is the tactic they're trying to set up or this is what they're doing to kind of like paint this picture and it was like really fascinating because you could see then how the lawyers in the case were actually trying to um set up the the story and and the situation and then of course they were giving their own their own report cards as to how it was going well anyways the the lawyer would have on like nine other lawyers and he'd invite them on and they'd all be you know in in the chat together and they'd all have this real time chat. Well, come to find out they were using StreamYard, And so I thought what I really want to do with the show is have the ability to bring people in flexibly, like bring them in like, like this, where I send you a link and it's, uh, you know, it's easy for you to join, but also, which I know is a VMix capability, but also, um, to set it up a couple of different ways where I can utilize NDI tools, manipulate my camera, um, run, you know, run my studio, but keep it pretty lean in terms of what's required. And I, I've always shied away from vMix just because I don't have a very powerful machine uh, and a few other other personal reasons. But I, my machine is not super powerful. So this is all web-based um, where I log into a website, I create the show, it connects the RTMP streams as we are doing with your channel today. It connects them for me. I can stream out to like eight different destinations. So several on Facebook, several on YouTube, your own custom one. And a Twitch account, which is the original place I was streaming to, um, so it just kind of fit where I wanted it. It's the and it's the flavor that I'm using right now. I've used multiples though. I've used Stream.io and I've used Resi and a few other things, and I've just kind of landed here. Um, so C CJ was going to join us here today, and he's also the VMix uh, fanboy in the company. One of them, uh, actually, to be honest with you, Bird Dog is a VMix. They work very closely with vMix, almost closer than I think TriCaster, to be honest with you. But we <clears throat> we won't publish that too loudly. Um, but yeah, they CJ uses vMix a fair bit. He uses it in his own studio setup at home, and um, I don't. I can't speak very you know very well to the the use cases. I'm pretty sure all the things I just explained to you vMix would do. Um, question how many destinations does vmix do like the rtmp streams and that sort of thing is it multiples is it is it tiered is it licensed um the 60 dollar package of vmix will do three destinations the 1200 dollar package of vmix well will do three destinations oh really yeah what why is that well, the $1,200 package of vMix also does eight camera instant replay, oh. um, which is a $250,000 value. Right. Um, it also will do uh, eight, eight channels or eight guests of the vMix call. Uh, will control PTZ cameras, will control live stream 4K. Um, you know, there's a list that goes on and on and on and on and on. The $60 yeah. version will take, I think, uh, maybe two cameras and a, and a graphic, 
<laughs> okay. And it's and it's pretty well limited at that point. But it just depends on what you want to do. Right. And right. and a lot of people go into this and they say, I want to find the solution. And what I found is vMix is really more like a Lego set. Hmm. You design your own solution based on what your needs are. Because vMix will do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And, this. and if you want to be able to hit a button and have 23 things happen all at once, vMix will do it. Right. If, if you want to have a video running and at the conclusion of vMix, at, at the conclusion of the vMix, excuse me, at the conclusion of the video, to have 23 things happen all at once, vMix will do that. Um, it just, it's, it's incredibly flexible. Uh, it'll run in the cloud so you can spin up a, you know, an, an, a server up in the cloud somewhere and take SRT camera feeds into it. Okay. Um, so it just, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a Swiss army knife made in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um, I, yeah, I've, I have heard that a lot about vMix. The, uh, the automation stuff that happens like after an event or after something triggers, like I know you use X keys on your show and that's, are those all API commands integrated with vMix or is that something like in-house that they do or what is that? It, it's a it's a shortcut that executes an API command. Okay. So I think of it like a macro. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So I have I have a, a childish version of the X keys that you have. Yeah. There um, you go. But I do have actually I twenty four. Yeah. I bought this. Um, oh man, like seven years ago, uh -huh. and uh, still works. And um, of course, really, really straightforward user interface. I, I do have a stream deck here that's like has its mm -hmm. own things. And when I was running OBS, you know, you, you set the triggers to that. It's LCD and yada yada yada. But yeah, the uh, the X keys version is it definitely. I don't know. I think it's I think it's more flexible right now <laughs> than Stream Deck, and and it's a shame because Stream Deck is very pretty, but um x keys just it's it's so it's such a basic device yes that it enables them to do like pretty much any sort of level of integration um the one thing i can't seem to integrate is Streamyard, so uh that's apparently coming oh, wow. but as as is all things in the future right yeah um anyway so uh, i wanted to, you were talking here and i wanted to catch people up on my channel you run a company called eastern shore broadcasting yes and wh what is it and what do you guys specialize in what do you do we design and build uh, pcs for live streaming primarily and so uh, churches and schools and colleges and individuals and you know you think of a, a an industry uh, that wants to do live or recorded video uh, they're approaching us and saying you know what do you you know what, how can we solve this problem um, we, we had a, uh, a big TV holding, holding company owns 50 TV stations approach us and they want to retrofit all 50 of their TV stations with vMix stations as backups and portables. Oh, nice. Uh, so that in the event of a weather emergency, they can take their entire studio in a box off site and be back on the air in minutes. Yeah. And so we've been, to, you know, we came up with an initial design for them and have been building that system over and over and over again for their various TV stations throughout the country. We've got a couple under underway right now. Um, and, you know, and that's that's one end. Um, the, the other end is, uh, you know, we'll get a church call us and they say, you know, we cobbled something together during COVID using an iPhone and, and you know, and, and a tripod and some yep. duct tape. Yep. And and now we're ready to really do what we what we want to do, because we've proven the point that this is a valid part of our ministry. Right. And so we'll sit down with them and kind of design something that's within their budget and we'll help them, you know, go to where they want to go. Um, and just oh, little yeah. things that may may not have anything to do with hardware software. For example, uh, Facebook is a great place for churches to live stream because mm -hmm. if you schedule your live stream in advance on Facebook, it notifies all the folks that like your church's page yep. that you've scheduled it for next week, next Sunday. And then next Sunday, it'll send people a reminder. And so it's a great way to to get folks in for that live broadcast. But Facebook does a terrible job of archiving. YouTube, <laughs> on the other hand, is an excellent archive. Yeah. 
So you, if you use vMix, you can stream to both of them simultaneously and the YouTube becomes your archive, or you can upload it to, to YouTube later, upload a recording later. Um, we do that a lot at our church because we have limited bandwidth. Right. So we'll stream one to Facebook, um, I think 720p, and then we'll record a 1080p, 60 in fact, uh, that we'll upload to YouTube later for archive purposes. And we've been doing it for about seven years at the church. And anyway, so having such a, and I, and I brought my, uh, my pirate broadcast team. This is our local high school. And I've been working with them for about six or seven years, um, getting them up to speed and then helping them stay up to speed using vMix and other equipment that we've supplied with them. Uh, I have a friend that, uh, that has been doing football for the, for the longest time using vMix and just bought a, a, a trio of bird dog P 200s and a bird dog keyboard to use for some of his sports broadcasts. Oh yeah. The legendary so, combo pack. Absolutely. So I'm um, very, which of course is no more, uh, but I'm interested to, to see as he gets some experience with that, you know, how that's working out for him. Cause yeah. you know, sometimes it's a little tricky to do quick movements that have a fixed start, start place and a fixed end place. And you got to get it right the yep. first time when you're using a joystick, as opposed to, a manual camera yeah so yeah it's so it's but it's fun to work with all sorts of different people with different needs i mean every day is is a, a different problem to be solved um and uh, the solutions are are the fun part of it no well the problems are the fun part of it the solutions are just the cream right um, That's so you know eastern shore broadcasting where we we represent uh, bird dog we represent uh, ptz optics another camera maker kind of a value brand Yep. Uh, we represent vMix. We have since the very beginning. We represent X keys, and all those together sometimes get bundled in a in a package right. uh, to provide a, a complete solution to somebody that needs it. So yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, that's no, well, that's great. It's a ton um, of fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm curious from your perspective uh, in regards to the keyboard and live events and churches and that sort of thing. So, you know, we we keep going back and forth about. PTZ control, I keep going back and forth. This may not interest anybody but me. Uh, PTZ control, controlling live camera movements on like a stage subject uh -huh. um, when the option to do zoning on a PTZ with presets is also prevalent. Mm -hmm. So like so, some people want that manned operator look, mm -hmm. but there's... There's so when it goes to video over IP and NDI metadata and commands, you know, and all that, it, it almost makes more sense to set up camera shots for zones and call those and then switch between those scene, those shots than it is to try and manually, you know, control a camera on a joystick, especially a lot of churches I'm finding are it's like one or two guys running the thing every single week and it's sure. not. You know, and it's two guys, meaning that's their whole tech crew, right? Um, where they're guys doing sound and light and slides, and then they've introduced the stream thing, and now he needs a secondary technician because you just can't do four. Um, and lights are sometimes on and off, you know, and then sound is the guy standing at the soundboard, and he's got a next button or a mouse next to him to advance the slides. But you know, it's it's those smaller groups. Because I do feel like there is a fairly significant learning curve when it comes to learning to do manual joystick control on a PTZ camera and doing it correctly, like doing sure. it so it's not a distraction. Sure. Um, so when you're, if you get a call from a church, wh where do you go? Do you kind of go down both alleys and let them decide or do you make a recommendation in that regard? Or what do you do? Because... You know, I'm, we're constantly talking to folks that are, well, we just got these, we, we need help setting them up. And right. then you kind of show them how to do it. And then they're kind of all over the place with the joystick. It's like, you know, you know what, like, let's just try a few zone ideas first or consider this philosophy. So I'd be interested to know what you say to people, say to folks. I think the first thing that we do is we try to kind of get an idea where they are in terms of their technical expertise, because we don't want to propose a solution that requires a certain amount of savviness in, in this technology. And these folks are, are starting down here. You know, yeah. we, we want them to be successful with what they do from the very beginning. 
Yep. So for most folks, we're starting out with, with no movement whatsoever. Um, you know, they've got two or three cameras and we're switching between cameras. And while the camera is not live, then it's moving. Right. Um, you know, if, if they have a preacher that's a walker and he's walking from one side to the other, yep. we've just got a wide shot <laughs> yep. and we're, 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 we're taking the easy path as people begin to adjust to the technology. And what I find is, you know, after a year or so, people say, okay, well now I'd like to, now I'd like to follow the, the movement. Well, just so happens that the bird dog crazies back in Australia have <laughs> unlocked some, some secret pouch of goodies inside the camera that now allows the camera to, to follow a m movement with no interaction from the operator. Yep. Uh, so that becomes a great solution. Um, or as simple as, um, as simple as what we do at our church, we have one camera. It's a PTZ camera. The only way to get from point A to point B is for everybody to watch. And so we've slowed it way down. Right. And, and we've allowed the camera to, to, to very slowly transition and zoom and pan and tilt and whatever it needs to do from point A to point B. Now, VMix, and will, we do VMix will, will do some of that, right? Will VMix do... Oh, yeah. VMix does camera control. Yeah, like a, like an actual cruise control option in VMix, right? Uh, like a point A to point B control. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and is depending that... on the camera, it, it might be a smooth transition or it might be a stair step, just depending on how that camera is configured. I see. Um is that a repeatable command? So you could like set it up where you click the button, it goes from A to B, it waits, and then it goes back to A, and it waits for for you to do it again. So like a graduation, sure, kids sure. are walking across the stage, and you want to repeat that shot over and over and over again. You can do that. Okay. Okay. Probably with a trigger. Yeah. Um, that says you know when 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 after a certain amount of time that this shot has been. Um, you know, if you're transitioning from, from point A to point B, when it gets to point B, you wait five seconds and then move back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Cause then you'd, well, anyways, I just, I just dreaming and thinking out loud for just, that's like one of those pieces of information that you just tuck away and somebody's going to ask you in the future and you, and then you at least have it. So, but I'll tell you, John, I am not a big fan of camera movement at all Yeah. in live streaming because there's so many, there's so many uh, uh, pitfalls or so many potholes that you can yep. fall into if, if you don't have enough bandwidth. And so you have to lower your bit rate. Any kind of movement of the camera is going to really look janky on the screen. Right. Much, much better. In fact, if you watch, I'm a big uh, fan of American football, yeah. college and pros. And if you watch the cameramen there, they don't do a lot of panning. Right. They do, a, they do a lot of zooming in, zooming out, and then switching to another camera that has the shot that they want. Yeah. They're not, yeah. You know, when when the punter punts the ball, they're not following the ball through the air. They're not they're not zooming down the field with the camera to get to the other end. Right. They're just not doing it because it doesn't look good. Well, and with the only real big pan that I could think of with American football is the kickoff right so they're going to kick it off and then you'll have that wide super wide shot of the whole field and it's literally like probably what 20 degrees they turn mm -hmm. because they have such a wide shot they they don't have to move very much to get that's from right. one end of the field to the other that's right and that is a lot less disorienting so tell me why why is it that you would shy away from movement in a in a live stream like just what's the preference there because it doesn't look good hmm. it i mean de again depending on the bit rate and the, the resolution and the frame rate, uh, you can get all sorts of artifacts in there. It, you know, it just, it's just ex the experience of having done it for a long time. I mean, yeah. I, there, there's sometimes where you just have a ghost of a character running down the field and his ghost is trying to catch up with him. Right. Um, it's, it's, and, and that's why the pros don't do it. Yeah. You know, yeah, they, you find that a lot in, want, a lot in hockey. Like we want it to look good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hockey and basketball are, are tough. Yeah, because uh, you've got a smaller space with a lot of action. But you're and, right; like it, they only cut between 
the main shot, which is center ice, and it's that 20 degree, 30 degree turning, mm -hmm. they only cut to like close up shots on those when there's not really a lot of movement going on. The movement is left to the wide shot. Right. And then the when the play is stopped, then they kind of, you know, go do a tight, tight shot in on a player or on a referee or something. But generally it's not fast movement. That is the close up shot. So and and the I don't know about hockey, but I know about basketball. And the 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 close up movement ends up being in the replay, not oh. in the live shot. Interesting. And so you've you've you know the replay operator has looked at his four cameras, or if he's running B mix, his eight cameras, and he's picked out which is the best shot, which is the one that's in focus, which is the right. one that, that doesn't have any kind of artifacts in it. And he says, Okay, that's the one we're gonna play. Um, and so that's the one where we actually get down in closer to the action. Now, you know, for example, I was watching a football game the other day and they have the, uh, the sky cam, you know, yep. that's on the, on the wires and they can lower that thing right down to the ground so they can get in behind the team huddle and then they can draw back and they can move it all around. And there's a lot of movement. Um, I find that movement a little uncomfortable, uh, even though it's an interesting shot. Yeah, I, I, I kind of lose perspective on where I am. Well, it's a, um, and the, the you would never be in that position ever in a game, like as a spectator, or even as a player. Like you'd never be hovering over the team huddling. So it's like a it's a very like this is a cool shot, but this is almost like surreal because I'm not supposed to be here. That yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, and it's an it's an interesting shot. It's it's like um, it's like a little bit of spice. Yeah. But you don't want a lot of spice. Yeah, you don't want to overdo it. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's you know we're here to watch the football game, not be impressed by the camera work. Right, right. In fact, if the camera work is good, nobody should notice. <laughs> now you're starting to sound like me. So my <laughs> my rule with IT work is if you're doing everything correctly, no one will know that you worked were doing anything at all. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. It is yeah. exactly right. Um, you anticipate all the problems and you take care of them in advance and uh, you, you'd be invisible. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Uh, I used to say that's why the tech guys, the backstage guys always have to wear black because you're not supposed to know they're back there. That's right. They're supposed to just disappear. Yeah, um, I noticed you're set. You, you're you just about disappeared. Yeah, I uh, I have a hair light, but on a black shirt, it doesn't work. I don't normally wear black, but it's my one of my bird dog, um, my bird dog shots. I also have... Um, Let's see if I, I have this shot. So that's a little a little more of the that's the desk and the setup. Actually, somebody on Tuesday had said, "Oh, show us your show us like your setup, your like your studio setup." And I thought, I don't have a camera to show my studio setup. So I have <laughs> PF one twenty, and uh, and that's yeah yeah that's how that goes. So we've got that uh, that secondary shot going on, which is which is nice. That's cool. Well, what I'm what I'm sending you today is actually um, uh, an output from VMix. Oh, nice! So I can I can give you a little shot of, of my studio. Oh, very cool! And you can see green screen in front of me. Yeah, you know, mic off to the side. Mike, my, I'm not a big fan of uh, you know showing the mic. I, sure. I want to just appear. I don't want anything between me and the viewer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I put mine right in front of my face because I like to hide from people. So. <laughs> yeah, I think there's something to that. And then, of course, you see the the bird dog P400. Now, I was going to say that's a that's not a that's not an entry level bird dog camera right there. That's a uh, no. That's no. that's the real deal. That's that's the beauty of being an integrator is you get to play with all the good toys. That's true. Yeah. So now you stream out of V. So I was just talking to the guys about this yesterday and today. You stream to YouTube. In 4K out of VMAX, right? Yes. And th so that's full quality out of that 400 that you're pulling. You're running 216030? Yes. Okay. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's something. And then you're running a, a green screen. If, if you've gone over to Tom's channel while we've been talking, you'll obviously notice that his set is uh, is pretty more advanced than mine. Um, but he's, he, you're running a whole bunch of stuff. Now VMix is handling all that green screen graphic and everything as well. Boom. That, this is the, uh, here, That's let me it. get rid of the name tags and we can appreciate this in all of its, in all of its glory. That's, 
that's the uh, that's the regular shot. And you notice when you when you took the lower third away, mine went away too. Just right. coincidence. Yes. <laughs> but it's it's called a trigger in VMix, which keeps the lower third up there for I think I don't know twenty five seconds or something like that. Oh, nice. And then it takes it out of the way, because there's nothing that says you know I'm trying to appear like a professional as, as to have a lower third in front of me all the time. I'm yeah. not a I'm not a professional. I'm an amateur. Well, I just do this for fun. See, that's. But if, a That's up for debate. Me video clip about eight years ago. Yeah, and it it's a twenty second clip, and we just have it roll on and on and on, and then we're using chroma key here. So yep. if we turn the chroma key off, let's see if I can give you a shot where we can do that. Um, I I appreciate your green screen setup because I've always thought that green screen can either be done well or done poorly. There we go. And the poorly one done is you can still see like the green outline on the body but yeah. yours i think maybe yours your green screen is a little further behind you than most people put it like right right behind them but yeah it's there's a little bit of distance uh, maybe 10 inches yeah okay so Gives not a little, little bit of space and you notice all the wrinkles i do notice the wrinkles but when you turn the, the chroma key on the wrinkles are gone interesting the key is lighting yeah Lighting is the key. We light the green screen separately than we light the subject. Yep. So you've got the you've got the green screen lit, you've got the subject lit. Um, today I'm I'm not using a hair light, but in the past I have. Sure. Um, but I'm a glasses wearer, like yeah. are you? So I have to be really careful about my light placement because I don't want to have any reflection if I can help it. Right. Um, or at least keep it as 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 much as as low as normal with the um, stream yard i'm trying to you know have right in my line of vision you right know, you and me so that i can i can see what what people are seeing uh, but it's kind of got a white white background in the uh, in, in the browser right. whereas with vmix i've got vmix everything dark and and everything else that i'm looking at dark so that i get well, as a, little reflection here as possible that's an interesting suggestion after every stream they ask like what could be better and uh totally a dark mode would be hey i also want to bring in cj who's uh, another bird dog guy who's joining us i asked i asked guys hey tom's gonna be on if you want to jump on with us so uh we'll we'll bring cj into the mix how's it going man hello welcome, All right. welcome. Can you guys hear me yes hey, absolutely CJ. hey tom how's it going it is well, you know, how much better could it get than to be on John's show you know, <laughs> live for the All very right, first now. time ever? All right. Well, now now we're getting a little ridiculous, everybody. You're gonna you're gonna make him blush. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I'm gonna have so to take gonna... the reds out of this camera just so you don't see me go flush in the flush on my cheeks. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah, and y'all have the uh pretty um contrasting backgrounds here. I like it. It's true. Yeah. Well let's let's do a little bit of that. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to move my whole stream yard over to another screen here. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Now now you look angelic. That's right. <laughs> I am in the light. Yeah, I uh, so I added some uh, green lights to my show the last couple of weeks, and I got rid of them today. because I didn't get rid of them. They're still here. They're just on the wall. They're, first of all, they're not strong enough, but when you add this lighting with green neon lights, it makes me look jaundice. And so <laughs> I decided that that wasn't probably the look we were going for. So I do run it on this second. You can't really see them. They're on the floor there, but you can't really, uh, can't really tell, but they, um, they're just not very strong. And so I need to get kind of like what my hair light is. It has a, a variable, um, intensity. And so I just want, I should get those instead. And then shine them on the back wall or something like that. That, that What's way. your backdrop? Just it's just a black scrim. Yeah. Oh well, then do it virtually. Okay, walk me through that. Well, just get an overlay that's got a lot of green dots on it, or whatever you want. Yeah. Throw it. Throw it behind you. Will Streamyard do overlays? Um it it has something that says overlays, but not not green screen overlays. I'll look into that. That's no, but idea. I mean, it, just. Well, let's see. Do I have something here I can show? No. But but we could make a, um, you know, Photoshop or whatever and put, you know, a green bird dog logo on it. Yeah. And make it look uh, fluorescent. We could even do it as a as a, a, a movie clip so that it kind of fades in and out a little bit. 
Yeah. And then you just, you just, it has a transparent background. You just drop it right up right there and it looks like it's attached to the wall behind you. Yeah. That's um, a great idea. You got to get the, um, the glowing neon signs that we've had at trade shows behind you. Or oh something. man, that would be so slick if I could steal one of those. I know they're in storage and, uh, um, you could do it virtually vegas so we could do it virtually get, yeah get the uh, unreal engine and and show off the free d plugin <laughs> yeah. uh, i think we're overestimating the power of the machine that i'm using that's fair because yeah, it it's easy stuff it's definitely having a it's having a go here today for some reason so i'm trying to just keep it like chrome is open of course and so it's like just can't handle it at all but chrome is kind of a hog it it is always been a hog but yeah Sometimes I open up my task manager and Chrome is like taking up 50% of my resources. And yeah. It's just like I'm watching YouTube. Like this should not be, this should not be doing that. So. That's one of the joys of being a PC builder is that I get to play again with all the big, big fire breathing toys. Yep. So power is not something we lack. I was going to say, I was going to ask you about that because I know you're designing computers um, for vMix in particular. Do you have any like, and I won't hold you to it, but any off the cuff specs for somebody that's looking to install, um, you know, the sixty dollars version of vMix, what sort of specs on their Windows PC do they need to be running? Yeah, vMix has done a lot of work on that, and their website has got what they call reference systems. So based on particular jobs that you want to do, you know, it's like, okay, I need to move all the furniture out of my house. I need a right. truck. Well, do you need an 18 wheeler or do you need a pickup truck? Well, vMix says, you know, if, if, if you need an 18 wheeler, here's the vMix version of an 18 wheeler. Yep. If you need a pickup truck, here's the vMix version of a pickup truck. And it lines out, you know, what the CPU would be, what the graphics card would be, how much memory you would need, how much storage you would need. Um, in some cases, they'll even recommend a case that you would, would put it in if you were to build it yourself. Right. Um, or if you were to go out and spec and say, OK, I want to go to one of the box stores and try to try to find something, you know, here are the here are the specs you need. You know, you need 16 gigs of RAM and you need for VMix, yeah. 16 gigs of RAM does everything you'll, you'll ever need in VMix, no matter what size it is. Really? Our, our biggest, baddest systems, people will pay us extra put to put RAM in that they'll they'll never use just because they want to be able to say they have 32 or 64 gigs of RAM. Right, of RAM, but it only needs sixteen for vMix. Oops, excuse me. That's you know, interesting. The I... new solid state hard drives. Well, they're not new. They've been out for years and years and years. That mount directly to the motherboard. Yeah. You talk about the 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 joy. I mean, I'm an old um, eight inch floppy disk drive user oh, yeah. from way yep. back. Yep. Yeah. And you pop that sucker in, and you wait for things to load. You got to crank down the closing like, hatch too, right? You got to. That's make right. That big Go click. get a cup of coffee, come back, and you're ready to go. <laughs> well, with a with a with an M2 solid state drive, I mean, it's just like it's like instant. Boom! There you yep. go. That's what that's what old people like me have been waiting 50 years for. Well, and the instant boot up time and stuff too. Like that's I noticed. I put SSDs in my machine at home before we moved to this office and i was like all right let's install windows on one of these as that's what it's going to do is the boot drive there you go and it's like a couple of seconds but, yeah. and even doing just like hard drives or ssds before was kind of a pain because you had to like plug it to the power supply yeah with the m.2s it's like putting a stick of gum you just you, you take it out and it, you have one screw and you're yep. done yep so it, it's really nice and user friendly i think is like the biggest thing which is which is great so, and, and it's it's lighter weight than a hard drive. Mm -hmm. um, Doesn't take up any space. Yep, no moving you parts. You don't have to have a. You don't have to find a spot in the case for it. That's that right. Interfere with something. And, and and Tom, for you, correct me if I'm wrong. Like business wise, you guys de do a lot of VMix builds, right? For oh PCs? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's kind of your bread and butter. Ninety nine point nine percent. Very cool. And it's, so are you guys looking forward to all the new stuff coming out in terms of like graphics cards or do you guys try to oh, yeah. only refresh every like year oh, yeah. or? Well, here's the thing with vMix and graphics cards. I was talking with uh, with Martin about that. Martin's the founder and, and, and the coder for vMix. You guys have met him. Um, and he said vMix uses the CUDA cores, C-U-D-A, CUDA cores. So if you want to see you know, which card should I get? Don't pay attention to anything else, or at least not first. Start with CUDA cores. Measure the CUDA cores. Then you can look at RAM. 
you know, and, and other kinds of things, but it's the CUDA course that vMix takes advantage of. So the new PCs, or excuse me, the, the new cards that came out last year, like the 3080 Ti and the 3090 Ti, you know, those rascals had like 10,000 CUDA cores. Um, the system that I use at my church has, I think, 1,200. Uh, wow. It's a, you know, it's a system we built years ago. It's got a, a GTX, um, G4 750 Ti. Um, it's got a little yeah. hand crank on the side of it. I was going to say, that card's, that card's old for sure. <laughs> a little hamster wheel. Yeah, really. And But but CUDA cores are the key. And so the, four, the 40 series coming out are supposed to be four times as powerful as the 30 series. So I can't wait to see. But vMix uses a lot of the, the, the processing power on the graphics card to process video. So if you've got cameras or you're doing live streaming or you're doing recording, um, you're going to be using the graphics card. If you're using NDI, NDI uses very, very little graphics card capability. It's huh. primarily CPU. Mm -hmm. So we had a client come to us and they said, well, we want to bring in eight NDI sources and eight camera sources. So we went out and got the biggest, baddest Intel CPU we could find it was an 18 core monster and the biggest, baddest video card. I think it was the 3080, 3090 Ti and, uh, you know, put it all together. And it just, it was just fire breathing. It was, it was just incredible amount of power. Wow. And they're loving it. They're loving it. And yeah. they do stuff for ESPN. So they needed the right equipment. Nice. Yeah, I, I come from uh, doing live sports and I, I built my fair share of vMix computers. I think the biggest challenge right. was always size or being able to make it travel worthy. Yes, still yes. Have enough punch to do like a multi-cam shoot. And so that was always the biggest challenge is finding a graphics card that was, as you said, fire breathing, but not also that took up the whole size of the case. And so... <laughs> Yeah. That, was, that was the biggest challenge I fought was finding something that was a nice balance of size and, and power. Yeah, we finally got them under 800 pounds, so we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to have a forklift or something. Yeah, that's right. No, a, a nice little short for you case and stick it in a, in a, a, a Pelican travel case or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's, the, that's kind of the combination we've hit on, and that seems to be working pretty well. Nice. Yeah, I was going to say, so with the like the portable stuff cj like what would you gravitate towards generally with that like if somebody says i want to be able to pack this up and fly it out to my location and do you know three four cameras the oh. yeah the the biggest thing was always trying to get a motherboard that was small that could also have sdi capture cards or hdmi capture cards and um kind of everyone has their own different thing of what they want in terms of what is your camera show SDI, HDMI, or are you going for NDI? Obviously you could have some people that are going to, oh, I want it all. And so that's where you're <laughs> kind of in a tough spot. If it's NDI only, you know, I would just send out a laptop. Like I used to just send people gaming laptops and I would do three bird dog studios and cameras. And then that was the show and it worked great. Um, mm -hmm. If people want SDI capture cards, I would try to do micro ATX builds to where they were smaller form factor. Yep. Um, I've done some for you builds. I also managed to do three U builds as well. That was a little trickier to find. Oh pieces. yeah. Um, and, and usually the cooling was the thing that struggled because you couldn't fit a big old, you could, you couldn't fit like a radiator in it. So right. you'd have to get like server cpu coolers which sound like jets taking off and so people are like you know is this is this supposed to sound like that and you're like yes yeah. it is don't worry yeah. um, kind of when you turn off any enterprise switch or appliance or something it sounds like the netgear m4250s when those don't have their silent fan mode you think yeah. it's about to explode when you turn those on it's it's almost like you can't talk over them they're running so hot like they're just so loud and honestly <laughs> So in a, in a year or so, we're probably going to end up moving out of this location into our own, like our own spot. And I'm going to have a server room and you better believe it. I'm going to run those things at full cool and yep. they're going to scream. And I've got a half a dozen of them. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm like looking forward to, it. I'm such a network nerd. Yeah. It's like, I can't wait to make those things like run as cold as they possibly can, but I can't do it because I got one in here that's handling, you know, the P200, the 120 and 
a bunch of other things and it's like it has to be quiet and it's, so it's, want people it's on it. quiet mode right now you can even turn it off on the 4250 mm -hmm. but yeah those jet engines and those things yeah um, yeah i had a call with a it was a church <laughs> sorry that's my dog a uh, church customer and uh he was like worried on the phone you could hear the worry in his voice when he turned on the switch the first time and i was like no that's fine you're good yeah it'll it's back off setting. um but yeah just to just to fit the micro atx board we would get a small case for it um and it was a lot more travel friendly and we would just kind of put that in a foam cutout case um and then we had little foam inserts yeah kind of well not with the screen the fox box style those are those are cool that's so fancy um, we we kind of had a similar form factor to that and then everything would travel but yeah that looks like the those are kind of the all-in-ones. That, that's a yeah. Cool. Those are slick. Made by a company out in California called Acme Portable. I've was, I've seen them. All right, we looked into that. They also had ones that like had the screens that fold out, kind of like a yes. book, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, th yep. Those are pretty sweet. Uh, a little those pricey, but I, I like. Oh them. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has a price. When you spend three or four thousand dollars just on an empty case you know that yeah. you've arrived at a different level. Well, and when you ask them for prices and you're like, yeah, just give us a call, you know, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> can't not can't willing to share their price on the phone yeah. or, or online. Yeah. Or to my face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I've always said like, yeah, if I can't find out the price myself, it probably, I can't afford it. Cause if they, if they want me to call and, Oh, tell me a little bit about what you want. And then it's like, oh, I'm, I know I'm already out of my league here. I can't handle this. Well, and we used to run, used to run into that problem all the time. And finally, I just simply said, okay, I'm going to put some sample systems on our website. Yeah. So if you want to, you want to get an idea what the prices are, here you go. But most likely, we're going to customize it for whatever it is you need it to do. Right. Um, and the price will get you in the ballpark and, and people will then self-select and say, um, that's something we can do. In fact, we could do a little more if we wanted to get more. And other people will say, oh, I can't even afford half that. So they'll they'll try to find another plan. Yeah. Right. Like if from a business standpoint, you know, you you give people too much information and they, they become paralyzed trying to analyze it all. Um, or you don't give them enough and then they can't make a decision because they don't have enough info yeah you and, and that's kind of like a big part of like my job at bird dog like as a sales engineer is literally trying to read the customer and where they're at knowledge wise right and not either a not overwhelm them or you know b not give them nothing right and it, it's kind of a dance and and just trying to figure out where you need to be and who you're talking to um, and I'm sure you go through that every day. And, well, and but, just the terminology you use. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you have no. to kind of find the level, right, of which to That's speak. Right. And yeah. so whether it's... Are we going to speak this part of English or are we going to speak this part of English? Yeah, and some people, sometimes you'll get people to say, you need to start speaking English or explain it to me like I'm five. <laughs> yeah. Well, we run into that a lot. I don't know, maybe CJ, you can talk about this from the bird dog side, but we, I, I find that we run into that a fair bit because people, are, people call us up or, well, they'll email us and they'll say, you know, uh, I have I have a bird dog camera and it's going into my OBS system and now I want to buy four more. And I'm like, okay, what are you using for your network stuff? And they're like, oh, well, the network's good. And I'm like, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> because like, you, it's not. So like when people buy the product, they run it on like a basic system, they love it, you know, and they, it's, it's working for them and it only costs them, well, currently $2,000 to buy that P200. And so it's like, this is great. Now we've got a budget. We got eight thousand dollar budget. Boom, we're gonna buy four more. And then um, you have to say, like, well, hang on, because there's a good chance that we're gonna max out the stuff in between. And so you maybe get three and buy a nice switch that's layer three or something like that. And there I feel like there's this balance, right? Especially on the sales side of things where it's let's talk about what you want right now and let's talk about where you're going in the next six to twelve months. And maybe like, are you going to have a reoccurring budget? Here are the things that you need to be conscious of in the future about expanding your camera environment, especially with NDI, but you know, your camera fleet, how it handles it, how the computer can handle it. Like, you know, we're, we're operating at 90% CPU right now. And so it's a little, uh, I probably won't be able to do a whole lot more, um, than, you know, what I, what I'm currently doing. So how do you, how do you, 
how do you approach that from a sales point where you're not scaring people off, uh, but saying the future is unlimited, but you need to remember these things. Is it just consciously saying that in your spiel or do you have a way to set it up with the customer to where they'll naturally come to that conclusion? I'm just always curious because oftentimes we do that where they'll buy extra cameras and then we're like, well, there's a reason why it's skipping and, and dropping frames now because you're running 800 meg megabits a second instead of 140. Um, you know? Yeah. I think it's really mostly context and talking with them because, you know, you can do emails and stuff with, with pre-sales. What I do is I always try to get on a call with them because I can't get what all they need over an email. Yeah. Um, so generally when I talk in a, in a good, use case I have I've had is like I'll talk to schools which generally will have tiered budgets per year right so like I had a, a college that was looking to do track and field and they're like well we have you know this X amount of budget this year but we'd like to build to this so what's like a good place to start and so generally that's kind of where I'll be like, okay we're on a budget and then usually my head goes to vmix when I hear that because that's like the best bang for buck you can get um, if they have a big budget and they want user friendly and stuff, I'll go like the TriCaster route and this is all NDI talk. But yeah, yeah. Um, in that regards, I'll say, you know, you can get these three cameras, we can get this switch and I'll, I'll usually recommend the bigger switch now just because I want them. I'll explain like you want to be future proofed and if you want to add four more cameras, you can. Right. And right. so then you'll go, oh, OK. Um, and generally they won't be like, well, I want, you know, 12 cameras next year or something like that. And and if it is the case, I'm like, okay, we need to take a step back. Right. So it's really just getting context of the story and what they're trying to achieve. Um, and, you know, rarely they'll say, you know, sometimes you'll get people that I'll do like a pretty base spec. They'll get it and like, well, this is amazing. Like I want to do more. And then we'll either just do the same thing over again or we'll build it and scale it yeah. up higher. But yeah, it's mostly just getting context for what they're trying to do. Um, and, it, and it's such an individual basis thing. There's not a one size fits all, which is great because that's why I like the bird dog devices because it's not a one size fits all camera. You can do SDI, NDI, HDMI, right? And so right. I'll tell people, you know, well, let's, let's start with HDMI or SDI and then we'll build into the NDI world, right? And you can, you can kind of use it as a stepping stone. So, right. Um, right. It, it's really nice to be able to have that flexibility. And, and I'm sure like with, you know, when, when Tom talks to customers, it's the same thing, just getting their context of their story and what they're trying to achieve. And that yeah. kind of helps them take the direction. So you're really taking the extra time then to understand the needs today and potentially tomorrow so that you're not rehashing out things that you already talked about this year. You know, mm -hmm. like you said, unless they go to the nth degree. You know, net networking is kind of like that. And I should bring this up that John dreams about his server room the way that other people imagine they're dreaming vacations. Uh, it's true. The, uh, <laughs> the, the network stuff is I would rather, I would rather send small amounts of data down multiple paths than large amounts of data down few paths. And so my theory is buying, you know, a, a decent size, like you said, a larger switch. And so that's, that's fine. Um, but if we are expanding and rolling out, then we start talking about aggregate links or lag, you know, connections between um, systems. And that way it keeps those um, devices only doing a little bit of processing each. You know, you spread the workload over multiple devices, whereas people buy a 24 port switch and they think I can run 24 cameras on this thing. It's like, well, hang, <laughs> hang on. That's not that's not what that is. So most of it's data, but not, you know, not high octane cameras and even you know even ptz optics and new tech and those guys like there is a limit to a hardware limit to switches so um i'm just always curious as to how to, how that gets approached because in my ideal world but money is a very real thing and budgets are a part of most people's lives and so you have to uh you have to approach it in some sense of reality but anyways yeah Nah, or not i guess it's no fun tom's model is just quote the heavens and uh, yeah, that's right <laughs> that's um, right i'm pretty sure this is judson what's going on man good to see you and uh matthias says hey those i've seen those acme portables they're not cheap a great box for a build out for military spec there you go Grab military those. spec equals high school 
Yeah, well, you need military spec for high school students, man. Those guys are brutal on equipment. That is, yes. We've had cameras come back that are just totally smashed. And they're like, yeah, student took it off a tripod. And I was like, oh, boy. So that's a that's and a on, tough conversation. On dirt bike track or something? Yeah, well, we've had those two. They came back from uh, Coachella or whatever. There's full of sand. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that would be bad. And I was like... <laughs> Brayton undid the bottom plate, and there was like sand in the pl- in the plate. We were like, "Hmm, wonder why this camera's not working anymore." <laughs> I had a friend that used to do um, hunting videos, so he would go out when the guys would deer hunt. Yeah, and he said, "You know, you'd be out in the boonies, and it a rainstorm would come up, and you know, you were there. You were you. you there was there was no ducking for shelter. Nope." And they'd get back to the hunting camp at night, and he'd open the open the camera and just pour the water out of it. Oh my word! And then use it the next day. Yeah, it, it was. You know, he said, "I always, I always made sure I sold my cameras after the end of the year." Right, because uh, they wouldn't make it through a second season. Yeah, I've I've done a little bit of that on an amateur level. I have a bunch of friends that liked hunting, and I wasn't really much of a hunter when I started. And so, but I was really into video, and so I would take a video camera out into the woods and actually videotape their hunts. And um, yeah, we learned. I, I learned quickly that you need at least like plastic bags and stuff because it's going to rain at some point you're going to get your equipment wet and if you don't if you're borrowing that equipment uh that's you want to probably try and preserve that (laughs) yeah i don't loan my cameras yeah yeah Uh, we'll let you purchase them at this point right yeah that's right very good well i have we have taken up the hour that i asked for from you tom so i really appreciate that uh for you spending some time with us and we are are really uh really grateful for that man and um i am planning on joining tom on his channel for all of you who just can't get enough of this um on the 12th of october is that right October 12th it's a wednesday it's a wednesday after three o'clock eastern yep and we will uh We'll hang out together over there. And all you so. have to do is Google streaming idiots <laughs> and you'll get it. It, just, it, it can't be any simpler. No, it's up well, there. Good, but yeah. It's uh yeah, it's definitely available. Um definitely check out Tom's stuff. And like I've I've been doing this for a mere three years, almost three years. Tom, how long have you been uh running your streaming? Three years, all show? right. Uh July we we celebrated 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, you got your uh, your award, right? That's I did. That's right. There, there right was a there on the wall. There was a committee that came together and uh, decided to give Tom an award for all the years of his uh, streaming service. So, but your channel has grown like crazy. Like, there's a ton of so. so what do you got? Like seven thousand subscribers or something like that? What is it? Something like that. Yeah, that's uh unbelievable so I mean, well done and when you think about you know we're we're a narrow niche inside of a narrow niche inside of another narrow niche industry yeah. um yeah. so yeah yeah i i never really started this with the intention of getting like a whole bunch of people to i just figured it'd be good to be available for a couple hours a week and sure. uh if people wanted to talk in real time about stuff then by all means and then it's kind of evolved into especially with the hiring of uh our sales engineers and more channel managers and guys over in australia it's just kind of evolved into something more than just me sitting on i used to run this for three hours from my home in clarkston i used to sit in my office online for three hours just available just sitting there available for people to ask me a question in real time it was kind of like an open phone if you will sure um but it's gotten down to okay we do an hour and we try and try and produce something of semi-decent quality and then here's the thing john you're using your gear yes so you're now an official user you're not just tech support you're not just you know a company guy you you have real life experience in you know i've i've got a p400 staring me right in face and somebody calls up and wants to know about that p400 i can tell them you know oh yeah i use that camera every day right every day i leave it on 24 7. it's that little fan that i hear whirring in the background when i yeah. leave the office that's the p400 i don't um you know the the p120 over there i use that well it stays on 24 7 but i use it at least twice a week right um you know i can tell you about this gear because i use this gear yeah i can't tell you how many folks are out there um that are going to sell you something 
and maybe they've never even seen it. In oh man, I can I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> we deal with that all the time. Where guys are like, "I sold this camera, but I don't know how to plug it in." It's like, wait, what? Yeah, like you know how to plug in the camera and get it like get it working? Do you know what? But they read the spec is? sheet. Well, Come yeah, on. exactly. It's like, well, it's a, the Sony lens is what we wanted. Um, it's like, okay, well, that's yeah. interesting. That's an interesting use, but uh, there's there is definitely a lack of education which bird dog is going to address there's a lack of education when it comes to um, ndi and just getting off the ground and getting comfortable with it and you know every every product there's the actually after cj and jake came on here in the us then they started generating a lot of videos about hey here's how you do these things yeah good that, stuff yeah and so good that's stuff. um we've seen a really high viewership of those items and like a lot of reception and so we want to kind of take that up again and those will have a long tail too yeah yeah I mean, well, you know because people will continue to refer i mean vmix yep. did videos i don't know 10 years ago longer and those things are still getting hundreds and hundreds of hits from people yep. that want to go back and see what it was you know how did that used to work yeah, yeah we're we're really interested in making sure that when somebody opens a box of our like a product of ours Yep. They have at their fingertips the resources they need to know how to use it the way it was intended to be used. And then if they want to deviate from that path, like we can discuss that. But you, you should never reach out to like bird dog support and be like, I don't know how to plug it in. Because, well, <laughs> well, first of all, you don't know what you've bought, but also That's shame funny. on us for not telling you how to plug it in before you purchased it. Right. Like, so it's it's a little like, for me, I'm like, no, I want to take, I want to take that, and I want to be sure that that doesn't happen anymore because people should know what they're what they're getting, and they're getting a great lens with a great picture, and they're getting a lot of versatility. They're turning this into network ones and zeros, network data, and now you have this extremely flexible protocol that you can convert to SRT and send across the world. You know, I can host this show over Bird Dog Cloud, and have guys in real time talking to me from melbourne and it's just it's just that versatile but if you don't know what you bought you just don't know and we need to get those resources out there so that's i'm i'm going on record to say i'm i'm going to work on fixing that anybody any idiot with a credit card and a bh bnh photo account can be full of bird dogs and not know anything about them. yep they sure can uh there are a lot of folks that that buy them because they're um Actually, they're they're quite highly spoken of around you know just even in the streaming circles and whatever the camera line. So people go to B and H and buy it. And that's exactly the type of customer actually that we get a lot of questions about. Hey, I bought this thing, yep. but I'm not. I plugged it into the the network, but I have no idea what I'm doing. And so, yeah, we, we need it. We need to fix that. I use my Cat Five cable. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't it power up? <laughs> yeah, I plugged it into the wall port. It's not turning on. It's like, well, where does that wall port go? Yeah, there's some networking questions there, right? That we have to we have to address. But anyway, so yeah, we're uh, it's it's true when you use it all the time, then uh, it becomes a little bit more second nature. I just don't want to lose sight of those folks that don't use it all the time. Like I want to get them to a place where they're. Uh, but it makes you authentic. Yeah, you're not just a sales guy. You're not just there because you're you're good looks. You're there because you really have. <laughs> knowledge about what's going on well we that know why makes all the difference yeah that's not why i'm here but that's for sure and uh cj would probably i was talking about cj oh yeah me too he would uh roll his eyes when if i were to try and sales pitch anything because i'm terrible at it <laughs> um but uh because i because I, I run support that's how that works <laughs> so i'm uh i'm the guy that knows how to fix it if it goes wrong nah, you, goes south. you gotta you gotta be in the weeds to really understand it so that's yeah I mean, that's what I did was I was the guy in the field plugging it in. <laughs> so yep. um, I can be like, I know this works or I know this is, you know, there's some steps you got to do to make it work. And it's not always just black and white, plug it in and it, you know, yeah, like what's NDI tools. I need to install that. Or like there's, there's little steps. So, yeah. And just even resources and whatever. And that's kind of like where I come full circle here is CJ's on the pre-sales team. So if you were to, email sales at bird-dog.tv or birddog.tv. Uh, CJ is one of the guys that checks out those emails and helps guys get it. So if you've got bird dog specific stuff, however, Tom is a national 
installer, designer, all that sort of good. Tom, where can they reach you if they want to ask you more about d- system design or buying cameras or anything? Where can they reach you? Don't don't call. Don't 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 email. don't call Tom. Don't 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 bother us. Yeah, you're right. You're not good at this sales pitchy <laughs> thing either. <laughs> no, it's 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 the old psychological. You know, t- tell them not to call, so they will. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Reverse psychology. Yeah, it's easternshorebroadcasting.com. Awesome. Very long URL. Eastern, Eastern Shore, Shore like this one actually. Like that one. I or, had it. I had it in the show. Yes, I put it in the show yesterday. I totally forgot I did that. Oh, that's awesome. You Fantastic. even spelled it all right too. I copied it from your website. (laughs) (laughs) So there it is. If you want to learn more about Tom and his company and his business, uh, also check out his YouTube channel, Streaming Idiots. He named it, not us. Uh, So he is over there once a week, right? Wednesdays? Wednesdays at 3 o'clock Eastern. 3 o'clock Eastern. uh, And you're in Central Time, right? So 2 o'clock Central? 2 o'clock Central. Awesome. So in California, like 5 a.m. in Australia. (laughs) Yeah, I can't get the Australians to come on this show. It's one thirty in the morning. Well, let's see, it's two seventeen right now in Melbourne. So, uh, I did a show when I was in Melbourne, part of that bumper video where it was one o'clock in the morning, and I was doing snacks on stream that day and ate Vegemite, and I uh, decided that wasn't for me. So that was a, a terrible awful. experience to do in the middle of the night, and then try to sleep for a few hours and go back and be useful the next day at work. So, yeah. <sighs> It was a bad combination of stuff, but anyways, we we do what we can, I guess. <laughs> um, I just want to cover up a couple things. What's going on, Quincy? Yeah, you are very welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I just want to jump in here and throw this. Uh, I had someone ask me for help with their new P200. They basically just use it for a point and shoot, no network. And they had no idea that it was even a network camera. They just used the HDMI out. So I opened their eyes and they fell in love with it even more that's amazing well done um ooh, south australia 1 47 a.m so uh yeah that's that's the sort of stuff that like we run into a little more often is they're like well we bought the cameras but we just want to use the hdmi it's like really you can do that you can that's fine. you can 100 percent do that that's totally fine thank you for buying the product but like also let me show you a video <laughs> like here here look at how versatile this is and so You know, they don't want to use the NDI function yet, but they're hoping to in the future. Anyways, check out uh, check out Tom's resources there, Eastern Shore Broadcasting, also the Streaming Idiots channel. Great place to be, a good community to join. So be sure that you hang out there with them. Uh, Feel free, of course, to join us here at birddogjohn.tv. Thank you, Beep Chirp, for that DNS redirect. Uh, We are here twice a week, 11 to 12 or 11 to 1220, actually. Uh, Eastern time every week. And so we try and do that a little more often. Now, next week, you're not going to want to miss next week's shows because I've got Bird Dog Jake on the show twice. I've booked him twice, which is unbelievable. And the first session we're going to do is Bird Dog Cloud 3.0, which is the new version of cloud. And so he's going to give us the the hottest items that he can fit into a whole hour. Uh, I'm going to invite him on the show and then I'm just going to like take my video off and let him run because his rig and his place is awesome and it it's it runs vmix and does all the cloud stuff and so he's going to walk us through a whole bunch of stuff with bird dog cloud and then on thursday he's going to come back and show us the new central software so if you are curious about central pro the new beta that's currently out if you're on our uh, mail list you probably got an email yesterday i think or the day before that said central pro is now available and so um central 2.0 my apologies. It is in beta right now, and there are three levels. So there's a light, a pro, and an enterprise model. Check out our website for uh, for the details on that. But on Thursday, uh, Jake, as long as he's feeling healthy and uh, and all is well, then he will join us next week on Thursday to talk about Central as well, and uh, we'll be able to get a good overview of all of that. So looking forward to those shows. And uh, like I said, next week Tom will have a show on Wednesday, and we will uh, plan to hang out again. So thanks, guys. Thanks for. Thanks for jumping on. I really appreciate you guys joining me today. Hopefully you found something beneficial. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. Thanks so much. I, I really appreciate it. And we will see all of you again next Tuesday at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time right here at birddogjohn.tv. Be well, take care of yourselves, and we will see you shortly. Have a great weekend, everybody. Later. 
All right. Go. Okay, the P200 has a fantastic Sony image module. It gives you 30 times zoom, great for any size room. It's great in low light and has awesome color rendition. On top of that, we have our BirdDog NDI processing engine, which gives you the highest quality pictures at the lowest latency. It's compatible with any NDI device on the planet and just gives you the best outputs. We have our brand new user interface with NDI version 5, which gives you waveforms and vector scopes to make sure you're properly exposed. It also gives you unlimited control as far as color control and using your camera. In addition to this, it sounds strange, but we can do pan, tilt and zoom at the same time. Try some other cameras, they can't all do it. The P200 is a fantastic camera that's got every type of connection you can want, from NDI with power over Ethernet, SDI, HDMI, any control interface. It's got a great big tally on the top. It's a really great camera. How to do with the time. And the cool thing is, for a limited time, if you buy three P200s, you get a free PTZ controller. 